Hi, my name is Raquel, and in order to buy or sell, you have to have the money of the beast on your mind, in your hand. And it's one of those words they don't translate correctly. In the New Testament, you can see that um, no one buys or sells the context. The word karegma means money. And here's the unabridged Greek-English lexicon that shows you that the karegma means the impress on the coin, or stamp money coin. And like, like around the time the book The Revelations was written, like in 66 AD, they uh, had a Jewish revolt. The Jews revolted against Rome and started coining their own money. And so like the revelation was that, you know, Nero, um, like the 666 adds up to Nero. Uh, I, I made another little paper about it here. Let's see, we'll zoom in. And it uh, explains the, uh, you know, what the symbolism of the 666 is. It, if you take like the Hebrew letters for Nero's name, where A equals 1 and B equals 2, then it uh, spells Nero. And it's, I think they even have a footnote, like in the Revised Standard Version, they have a footnote that'll show you that it um, means Nero, and Nero's picture was on the money and he was emperor at the time the Jews revolted and um, so he was like one of the people that was um, very uh, unliked at those times and so like when the Jews revolted it, uh, they had a big war the Jewish war and they destroyed the temple and all that stuff but there's you know I don't believe a lot of the mythology in the Bible like um, you know, the Old Testament, there's some good stories in there and fables, you know, and, uh, and but like Jesus was a radical and the person who ruined the um, the New Testament is this guy, St. Paul, because the things he says aren't logical. It's like confessing with your mouth that Jesus Christ has risen from the dead isn't going to save you. And so what what is not logical is like of the devil... And the devil is a slanderer and a liar. But in the book of John 1.1, 1, 1, you know, Jesus is the Logos. And, um, and Logos means logic. And so, like, whatever is not logical is not of God. And, like, Jesus told his disciples to go forth without money. And um, he said, you can't serve God or money. You'll either love the one or hate the other or hold to the one and despise the other. But the Pharisees, who loved money, heard all this and scoffed, and that, that's in Luke. He, these words aren't translated correctly. It's this word mammon. It, it really means money. And I finally got this Wikipedia thing changed. You know, I've edited it and put some references in. So if you look up the word mammon and the number of the beast... You can see the additions I've made so that people know that the mark of the beast is money. And I've got scholars that uh, have said that too. That, you know, just look at the whole context of it, buying and selling. And the kragma, it isn't, it isn't a mark, it's money. And so is mammon. Mammon is an Aramaic word for money. But, you know, they don't tell you all this. They, they tell you, oh, you got to be saved, you know, and Jesus died for your sins. But... You know, that's all superfluous. Like, Jesus was a radical, you know, and he wanted to establish, like, heaven on earth. And you start thinking, like, there won't be any money in heaven, there won't be insurance companies, and they won't be making cigarettes or um, bad things for you that are unhealthy, you know, like, and, um, you know, people will eat more nutritious. I think that one of the biggest tragedies is that people eat meat, you know, and... Um, it consumes a lot of grain. Most, most of the grain they, they grow in Nebraska and Kansas, all that corn and goes to feed pigs and cows. And um, they could use that for feeding people. Like in, in Mexico, they make those corn tortillas out of that. But anyway, today is um, November 11th, and uh, it's close to the 50th anniversary of the assassination of JFK. And I've been onto this JFK thing since I was like, I don't know, 25 years old. There's a picture of me, uh, trying, where's that light coming from? 
I can block it there with my hand. But so there I am downtown. It's right on the corner of Stone and Pennington. Uh, 22 years ago today, the CIA killed JFK. And I was passing out some papers I wrote. You can see across the street here, I uh, put up some of my signs. Let me zoom in there. Uh, yeah, there you go. Look, I pasted those signs up on the wall on, or on a window, and they tore that building down. And uh, there we go. So, geez, I don't know how old I was then. I don't even want to think about it. I had my hair dyed yellow, and it wasn't, or blonde, and it wasn't a very good idea because it um, caused um, uh, my hair to break, you know, it was like icicles. And then, not, and this is like in front of the old Gallagher Theater, I'm demonstrating, so what if CIA killed JFK? We're making money. And I, and I had a little table up there, I'm reading a book, there's a book on my lap there, hair still blonde and these, I don't know who took this picture but he I came back like next week or so and he uh, gave me uh, a copy of this picture but, uh, you know I've been out like I said I've been on to this Kennedy thing for a long time just get out of focus let's see here there you go and like the first uh, I don't know I've this is like the first serious thing I wrote about it, and this was like in 1985 in Ed Finkelstein's uh, Tucson Examiner. I got the front page on there, and, uh, and uh, then uh, I first found out about this, like I was doing research in the University of Arizona library to find quotations from famous people who believed in eliminating money, and I made this gospel of eliminating money. This isn't the original one, but I found all these quotes, you know, Karl Marx believed in eliminating money, Muammar Gaddafi, the populist leader of Libya, believed in eliminating money. So I was reading about Pol Pot in uh, Cambodia, and, you know, they, they slandered him. They made him look like a demon for killing all these people, you know, the Killing Fields, which is a propaganda movie, because, um, you know, a lot of these people died from malnutrition, and uh, after the war, the the bombs, Nixon was bombing illegally in Cambodia, and, and they had a civil war there too, so, like, um, the dikes were all damaged, and uh, I heard that a lot of the bomb craters they had in, uh, oh dear, my phone numbers are up, I'm going to take them down, because I'm going to talk about the Kennedy assassination for a while, but the uh, they had bomb craters where they used it for fishing, the growing, you know, like raising fish in Vietnam after the United States. It was one of the indictments against Nixon. And Nixon was in Dallas the day before the assassination. He was allegedly there for a, a Pepsi um, meeting. And they even had a picture of him in the Dallas Morning News or the Dallas Herald Times. That uh, there he is. And uh, he's done with Don Kendall. And uh, and so uh, I cut that out and put this in this little flyer I made. And then, th and then this was interesting. Like in 1998, The Nation magazine had like a, a real special thing about where was George, George Bush, when uh, Kennedy was killed. And there's a lot of uh, evidence, you know, that um, George Bush was in the CIA, you know, and he was anti-Castro, and a lot of these people that were associated with the assassination were uh, anti-Castro Cubans and CIA agents. But, like, when I was studying Pol Pot and learning about the truth about the killing fields there, like, you know, the bombs from these B-52s were bombing along the in Cambodia to try to stop the North Vietnamese from coming down into the South Vietnam, so a lot of people got killed in those, and I, those those constitute a lot of the killing fields. I mean, I wonder how many of those like mass graves are people that died in these bombings. But like, um, so Pol Pot emptied the cities, and and he abolished money, and for like 
ninety percent of the people in Cambodia it wouldn't make any difference because they didn't even have any money. You know, they were like farmers out there. Like um, one of my um, friends went to China and said that I was talking to him on the beach, and uh, he said he went on one of these tours way back, like into the villages, and he said the people there were just like really dirty, and you know they lived on dirt floors and. They had their gardens, and basically they were like living hand to mouth back there. So and that's the way a lot of these Cambodians lived. And uh, so when Pol Pot threw all these people out of the cities that weren't really producing anything, and made them go work on the farms to get the dikes going and everything like that, I guess maybe a lot. Some of them died, of course, but and then they got rid of a lot of people, you know, that that were you know, establishment people. So, you know, it was a revolution. And um, for three years, Pol Pot started to get things back together. And then, like, on Christmas Eve, the uh, Vietnamese invaded and destroyed the evidence. But, like, I was at the university doing all this research on Pol Pot. And, and Noam Chomsky has a, a good book on it. It's called After the Cataclysm. And he wrote it with uh, this guy, I think his name was Herman or something. I just saw him mention Gareth. Porter, maybe, or he, no, he, he was another writer, but they were um, right next to the Kennedy assassination book. So I'm walking down the hall in the library, and I happen to see a, this book. It's called Coup d'etat in America by um, Canfield and Weberman. And I'm Facebook friends with this guy Canfield, but this guy Alan J. Weberman, he's, he's like... Uh, anti-fascist, you know, he's, he doesn't like Holocaust deniers, and, you know, he put this book together showing that the CIA killed JFK, and it involves these three tramps that they found after the assassination. They were in these, uh, it was in like a gondola car, where, and uh, in back of the grassy knoll here. I've got some other pictures that are that show their faces up close, but uh, they were walking. Here's like the grassy knoll. Kennedy came around here. There's the Texas School Book Depository, and there's a wooden fence here, and the railroad ran back there. So these three tramps were behind this fence, and one of the three tramps must have been an expert marksman, because that's where they shot Kennedy, and you can see the headshot in the Zapruder film. Kennedy's head shoots back, and people saw puffs of smoke back here, and this guy Lee Bowers in this railroad tower saw these guys run into one of these boxcars, and the train was starting to leave, so Mr. Bowers told the train to stop, and he called the police, and the police went and checked these cars, and they found these so-called three tramps, and... Uh, they were um, cursing at the police. So one of the policemen jacked a shell in his shotgun. Uh, you can't see it here. There's another picture of him. And these newsmen took these pictures. Let's try to find that. There's one where they're carrying this ri rifle. There he is. You can see he's carrying this like shotgun or something. And uh, they have police reports. <clears throat> I don't remember who the cop was that <clears throat> said that he jacked a shotgun shell into his into the chamber and told these guys to get off the train and they were cursing at him and so you know this was 1963 and then like um dick gregory you know the comedian was onto this <clears throat> and uh well actually what happened was one of these kennedy assassination buffs this was right after the watergate burglary and he happened to take a look at these pictures of E. Howard Hunt and Frank Sturgis, and they were the Watergate burglars, and he compared it to these three tramps, and you can see in some of these other pictures here how similar they are. Here's uh, pictures of E. Howard Hunt and the tramp in the middle, and Hunt always likes to wear this kind of a hat, and you can see the nose and the mouth and is pretty much the same. That's another picture of Hunt there. And, and then this other guy, 
looks like Frank Sturgis. There's, there's uh, the picture of the tramp there, and Frank Sturgis. There's a, here's another one of them, and and the, that Frank Sturgis. But there's another really good one. I've I've got somewhere else here. That really shows them a lot better than that. Let me uh, show it to you in this newspaper here. There it is. This is actually the photos they use in the House Select Committee on Assassination in 1978 and 79. The House of Representatives had hearings on this, and they examined these tramp photos, and they got this guy, uh, uh, Clyde Snow. He's a really well-known anthropologist in Oklahoma, a forensic anthropologist, and they got him to say that that these are not Hunt and Sturgis, but I mean, you can see it's almost a dead ringer. And these guys were friends. They were they were anti-Castro Cubans. Frank Sturgis actually worked in a, a casino down there. He worked for Castro. He infiltrated and worked for Castro in a casino. He didn't work for Castro because Castro didn't want the casinos. He shut them down. But he worked down there before the revolution. And... Um, you know, the mafia was involved there, and when Castro kicked all the mafia out, they were pretty mad because it was like, you know, a place where rich New Yorkers would go and stuff like that. But this guy, uh, he was a water, you know, he was a Kennedy assassination buff, and he just happened to see these pictures of the tramps and the pictures of, this is the story, you know. Um, and then he said, hey, you know, he started spreading the word, and, and, he, and Dick Gregory was one of the first to start spreading the word. And then, uh, and then this guy, uh, 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 Jim Garrison, who made that really good movie about JFK, he uh, was aware of these pictures. And he, he, was on, uh, he went on the uh, Jimmy Carson show, or uh, what's that guy's name? Johnny Carson show. Here, here you can see he put the tramp picture in this book of his. And, uh, and then he talks about it over here. It was Richard Sprague, I guess. He collected and studied uh, photographs of people in Dealey Plaza. And he gave these pictures to, uh, to Jim Garrison. And he tried to show these pictures, you know, like they do on America's Most Wanted. He wanted to show these pictures of these tramps to ask if anybody knew who they were. This was in 68, I believe it was, when he did this. No, wait a minute. This was in 88, 1988. So I guess he didn't, uh, well, it must have been before that. I don't really know the date. But it's kind of odd. I guess, I don't know if he knew that it was Hunt and Sturgis, but I did write Oliver Stone, you know, and uh, told him that it's Hunt and Sturgis. I sent him a copy of that newspaper article I wrote. And... Uh, so um, they they did show in that JFK movie a little bit about the the tramps. They had a passing picture of them being taken away. So I even have up here that Jim Garrison. Jim Garrison was the New Orleans city of New Orleans or parish. Maybe he was like the county. I think he was the county attorney down there, and he uh, had jurisdiction because a lot of these people. <clears throat> had um, ties to New Orleans. So uh, he, uh, in fact, you know, Lee Harvey Oswald was down in New Orleans passing out pro-Castro leaflets. You know, they, CIA set up, um, they set up uh, Lee Harvey Oswald. He was a patsy. He even said he was a patsy. He was being taken up in the elevators in the police station, and there were a bunch of reporters outside, and they yelled at him, or he yelled to them that, that he was just a patsy. And then they asked him, did you kill a president? And he said, no, I haven't even heard about that until you just said it, you know. So he he knew he was being set up. And, uh, you know, they, they told him to carry some curtain rods to the, or he said they were curtain rods. But, you know, it's like with this uh, Martin Luther King thing, that guy James Earl Ray was set up and they told they told Earl Ray to, to buy a gun and get all his fingerprints on it and leave it over by this hotel or something. Maybe he and they uh, 
and then th they set him up and uh, he got away and <clears throat> and uh, I so I've been pretty much trying to spread the word about this Kennedy thing for a very long time I, I made this flyer and uh, it has those pictures there there's the uh, you know what what we need is like an ant uh, we need to get another anthropologist. Well, this guy Clyde Snow is still alive. That's part of the problem with this Kennedy assassination thing. There's a lot of documents that they still haven't released. You know, it's going to be 50 years since they killed him. And uh, so, and like George Bush Sr. was involved. But like here I put a list of all the, uh, all, all the people that were like on the Warren Commission. You know, uh, Gerald Ford... Became was on the Warren Commission. Then you had Alan Dulles, who was the head of the CIA, and uh, C. Douglas Dillon. He was uh, Kennedy's head of the Secret Service. He was on there. <clears throat> but uh, it was a whitewash. But And then in 1975, they had this... Um, it was called the Rockefeller... Well, it, wasn't, it was not called the Rockefeller Commission, but... It was called the. Um, it was an investigation in, into CIA activities in the United States, and they had uh, Ronald Reagan was on that, and in that committee, it was in 1975. They re-examined, well, they examined the Trump photos, but they didn't show it in the final report. And I went, you know, I, when I was studying all this and reading that book that I was showing you earlier. I'd check the footnotes, and I'd, they had the whole 25 volumes of the Warren Commission report, and they had uh, all the <clears throat> House Select Committee on Assassinations reports, you know, hard hardcover there. So I looked at all those and checked all the references and read a lot of it. You know, I'd sit up in the library quite a lot. And then, uh, you know, I came to the realization that there was a coup d'etat in America. It's just like it says in the book and you know I picked the book off the shelf just because I thought it was a joke it, I didn't you know it's everybody knows the Warren report is gospel truth you know our government would never do anything like that but you know when they killed Kennedy it really changed the the history of this country and you know we went to the war in Vietnam and and, and then we had this this <clears throat> fake fake 9-11 thing well the Vietnam war was a big lie too. They uh, had this Tonkin Gulf incident, which they made up a lie saying that we were being attacked. Our Navy was being attacked by the Viet Cong, and so that's why we went to war with them. You know, it's another big lie. Like Pearl Harbor, we set them up to let the Japanese fire the first shot, and uh, that's basically what this 9/11 thing was. It was a setup, and these guys were like, like, you know, they were. Low, they were they, they were working for the CIA, and you know they brought them here and told them to go learn how to fly an airplane, and you know and they set them up. But even the people that taught these guys how to fly an airplane said they didn't know how. They didn't they couldn't even fly a Cessna. So they were. I was watching a video today about this 9/11 thing, and you know these this is a huge plane. You know it weighs you know tons. You know and. He, he, they had, in order to, they, you know, these guys that don't even know how to fly a Cessna had to switch these switches to get it off the, you know, the remote control, and they had to do all these things that they certainly didn't know how to do, and so um, those guys were set up, and and um, actually, I think a lot of people are thinking that the the those were drones that flew flew in there. They were remote controlled planes, and. They had this thing called Operation Northwoods, and you can find all this on my uh, website. This Operation Northwoods was um, um, General Lyman Lemnitzer, who was w working for Kennedy. I think he was like the chief of operations for like the Mediterranean or something. But Lemnitzer was also on that Rockefeller Commission, which is very strange. But Lemnitzer came up with this plan to have an airplane allegedly full of college students, and uh, they were going to switch planes and then shoot the plane down and and claim that, that Russian MiGs shot it down, and then we could have started a war with uh, 
uh, Cuba. But uh, the thing that happened was, um, well, that failed. You know, the Bay of Pigs things failed. And um, Nixon, in his um, secret tapes, you know, when he was in the White House, he talks a lot about this this uh, Bay of Pigs thing, which a lot of people think was a code word for the Kennedy assassination because uh, Nixon knew about it, but I don't really, I'm not sure he wasn't as involved in it as Lyndon Johnson was. And like I said, George Bush Sr. was certainly involved. He, you know, he's head of the CIA. And his son, you can see that his son is like, has such bad karma, you know, George Bush Jr., you know, President George Bush Sr., too. They both have, like, b bad karma, but his son has much worse karma. You can see it in him, you know, like, he allowed this 9-11 thing to happen. You can, when he was in that school in Florida reading this book about my pet goat to these kids there, you can see that... Uh, it doesn't look right, you know, the whole thing. And George Bush said that he even saw the plane right there fly into the building before he went and started reading that book. They've got evidence. I mean, there's so much evidence about this 9-11 thing, you know, to get us involved in this um, war in Iraq, which was, you know, we have to steal this oil. You know, we know that we're running out of oil, but very few people know that this third building fell down on... Uh, on 9-11, and it came straight down. It was building number seven. It came down like at 5.30 in the evening. Not very many people know about it. There was just a few little fires in there, but this building had all these, all this evidence. It was like a government building. I think the CIA and the Secret Service and like the Security and Exchange Commission and all these people had offices in there, and it was actually the New York Com Command Control Center, which wasn't wasn't occupied, which seems kind of strange, but uh, and you can see like it was an explosion that blew that up. You can it just pulverized everything into dust. Like any uh, the only thing that's left, you know, like at Ground Zero, if if you look at these aerial photographs, you can see it's just a bunch of steel girders. Like there's no glass, no desks, nothing. You know, no telephones. It's all just metal. It was all like blown up and. A lot of the eyewitnesses that were there, the firemen and people like that, they they have videos of them saying that it was like boom, 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 each floor. There was like explosions in there. So anyway, I've got that Kennedy assassination flyer. This guy uh, is the son of E. Howard Hunt. And he wrote this book uh, on uh, Bond of Secrecy. Well, it was co-written by uh, with somebody else, and it even has a foreword by Jesse Ventura. But he, you can see, there's my flyer he got in there, and uh, I thought I was pretty flattered that he had it in there. But uh, his dad um, made a confession that you know he was in, he was involved, and uh, that Johnson was behind it and stuff like that. And then I influenced uh, this guy, uh, Bo Gritz, to, uh, I ran into him here in Tucson and uh, gave him one of my newspapers about the Kennedy assassination that I showed you earlier. And I told him, you know, what happened. And he put those pictures in his book. He actually, you can see, he just tore it right out of the newspaper and put them in there. There's, there's Sturgis there. But he doesn't go into the story. He just said that, uh, he just says down here that uh, in addition to the badge man, E. Howard Hunt and Frank Sturgis long time were identified as tramps. So, you know, that, that tells you right there. I mean, anybody who mentions these tramps, and a lot of people will say, you know, that, 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 that these really weren't, the, or it was somebody else, you know, and if you look at the police reports for these other people, it doesn't match with the other police reports. Like, you know, these guys were cursing and they had to jack a shell in there. There's none of that in this, um, about these other guys. You know, they were just the most friendliest, nicest bums, you know, that, that you could find. And, you know, the people that know them. But, and, and that's what they do in this, this 
stupid skeptic magazine, you know, I've met this guy, Shermer, twice, you know, and I try to talk some sense into him about this stuff, and, uh, like, about the Holocaust, too. And uh, he, uh, he didn't write this story, but you can see they mention the tramps here. And this doesn't, it doesn't even look like them. You know, there's the hunt tramp. He look, that one looks like a Mexican. And uh, you can see the difference there. That doesn't even look like him. And then, and then we've got the Sturgis tramp up above there. And there was a third tramp. Oh, no, here's the Sturgis tramp. And there was a third one. But this guy up here, and I think he was the uh, the sharpshooter that was behind the grassy knoll. And what they did, you know, after they fired the shots behind that fence, they threw the guns into uh, in, into the trunk of a car because there were a lot of cars parked back there. And uh, so then that's they almost got away, but then they got caught, and they were just about to give paraffin tests to these bums, but then. Somebody came through and announced, oh, we caught the killer. You know, they caught uh, Lee Harvey Oswald. So they let these guys go. And uh, that, that's just, um, you know, when I first found out about this, it really, like, hurt my heart to think that, you know, our government would do something like that. But, you, you know, you just, uh, these people, they're just so greedy for money that they... Um, just want to make money, like the, you know, the Dwight, President Eisenhower, Dwight Eisenhower said that we you know to beware of this military-industrial complex, and that's exactly what happened when Kennedy took over. They they wanted to you know build bombs and stuff like Raytheon right here in Tucson. They just made some new cruise missiles, and I think they cost a million each, a million dollars. Uh, you can guide them, you know, and you can change trajectories and you can program it in flight now, you know. And so they they want to sell all these bombs to, uh, to you know, make money and stuff. And so a lot of, you know, these politicians, they get kickbacks from these companies and, or not kickbacks, but campaign funds. So, you know, Plato said that democracy was like one level above tyranny. And that's basically really what it is, you know, and like we need an aristocracy that of, you know, or a meritocracy, you know, like we should have a, somebody that coordinates all the distribution of everything, you know, with, with abundance, you know, with modern machinery, we should be able to um, make um, plenty of things for everybody, but it's just not that way, you know, it's like the people are just these rich people, <clears throat> they're getting richer and richer, and they, they've got these huge houses, and um, it's just like the worst thing in the paper recently was this um, climate change thing, I guess. It was on the front page of the New York Times. They're saying that it's going to really cause the, the production of food to drop. And then they had a, another one. Yeah, here it is, a risk to the food supply. But uh, another scary story it was, uh, oh, well, let's see here. Oh, what was that scary story? I can't, I can't remember it. Oh, they were showing, uh, oh yes, like the trajectories for like, if we have a two centigrade degree raise in the t air temperature that it's going to, you know, melt and cause, you know, flooding along the coasts and Millions of people are going to have to move and things like that. But, and it showed the trajectories. Uh, I didn't, and like, it just doesn't seem possible. It just looks like it's, there's no way we can stop polluting and putting greenhouse gases up there. So it looks like, I don't know how, you know, like this huge typhoon they just had hit the Philippines yesterday, last night. And uh, with like, there was the biggest, baddest, was a typhoon or cyclone they had down there that's ever been recorded with um, so much force and everything. And, you know, it's just like if the oceans rise and they're going to send a C-130 transport over Greenland uh, to uh, record how much has melted, which they got new equipment on there. So, you know, I mean, it's just... Um, 
I think one of the places you don't want to be would be right here in Tucson. I wouldn't want to be in Los Angeles or um, in Las Vegas. You know, these places are like fool's paradise. So let's see if those phone numbers go up here. There they go. We'll take a few calls. I've got like 15 minutes left. It's a pretty nice night out, about 70 degrees out. Today was like 90, though. It just doesn't seem like we're ever going to get like any kind of winter down here. It's kind of funny to see these people up in Rockefeller Plaza skiing, but that is a artificial skating rink there. Okay, we got some calls. Let's see. Hello, you're on the air. Yeah. Hey, Raquel, how are you doing I'm tonight? I'm pretty good. How are you? I'm fine. Hey, I was wondering, uh, are you going to go see Killing uh, um, uh, Kennedy? Oh, that one by Bill Riley? No, I, I think that's garbage. You know, that's the part of the problem, you know. These journalists... They go around saying, oh, we're never going to find out the whole truth about this, you know, and they just kind of, you know, giddy in their head and stuff. But the truth is out there. They just ignore it, you know, and mm-hmm. they, they can't oh. they can't accept it. It's very hard. You know, it was hard for me. You know, yeah. when I realized that this isn't a democracy and all these people have been lying to us, you know, the, the devil is a liar and a slanderer. And that's what these people are. And that I have another book here I was going to talk about. You know, they had to get rid of Bobby Kennedy because if he was going to get you know, elected, he would have gotten to the bottom of this. And I was going to mm-hmm. talk about how they killed him, mm-hmm. but uh, I'll let you talk for a little while. What do you want to no, say? No, no, I was just, I was just wondering because you know, now uh-huh. I hate to say this about Bill Riley, man, yeah. but he's his books are selling. I know, I know. The show. I know it's terrible. It's crazy. It's like you know, these people are brainwashed. You know, um, I've been. Uh, I asked a couple friends of mine who's very religious uh-huh. about uh, killing Jesus. Oh. And I asked him, now, how can he wrote, write a book about Jesus of Nazareth uh-huh. without being involved with religion? Well, I, no, I mean, I you mean, think about it. I mean, you mentioned his name, Jesus of Nazareth. You may be thinking of baptisms and um, Last Supper and, uh, you know, the, no. the stuff you have been learning over the years. And uh, how can he actually, you know, write a book about him without being involved with him. I don't know what you mean. You know? And it was the same way about Lincoln. Oh. You know, I don't know if you... I read part of Lincoln's book, uh-huh. his book of Lincoln. Oh, yeah. And he left a lot of information out. Oh, I never really studied that. You know, there's various conspiracies about that. You know, like, mm-hmm. I don't really know what the bottom line of that is. I never really got into it. What is the... What do you think they got rid of Lincoln for? Well, I mean, you know, there was a lot of problems that yeah. was going on yeah. back then, with the, uh, even after the Civil War. Probably had to do with money, though, money and banking or something. Yeah, but, well, because yeah. of the Civil War, yeah. it was forced to to enact uh, the, social, the income tax oh. and, and visions, mm-hmm. and he wanted to eliminate some of that. He also wanted to eliminate paper money. Oh. He wanted to go back to the original... Coins. Oh yeah, gold and silver or something. Gold and silver yeah. coins instead of paper. He mm-hmm. thought the the banking system was really mm-hmm. uh, corrupt as yeah. being, you know, who's at the top is going to make mm-hmm. the money and who's at the bottom won't. Yeah, well, mentality. yeah, you can figure that was uh, what that was about. But I got another call. I'm gonna... Oh, okay. Hey, I let the guys just want to ask if you would, you know, if you heard. Heard about that killing Lincoln or not? And yeah, yeah, I've heard about that. And you know, I don't. It's too bad. You know, it's it, it, that's what we need though. Is somebody like Jimmy Carter maybe, or yeah. somebody I'd like to influence. Like I just noticed today that Carter's grandson is running for governor of Georgia, mm-hmm. and you know, I'd like to meet him and say, hey, you know, we should get your dad and and some other people together and just say, hey, look, you know, the CIA killed Kennedy and this 9/11 thing was a setup. You know, mm-hmm. And if we don't stop polluting and stop all this money, funny games on Wall Street with these money changers down there, then we're, you know, we've got to change our trajectory pretty quick or we're going to have global warming and mm-hmm. it's going to f- cause a lot of damage all over the world. Because, you know, Jimmy Carter is a, a, you know, he's a good man, you know, yeah. and, you know, he does charity work and builds people houses and stuff. You know, and if, you know, if we really, you know, we need to save this planet, you know, otherwise... We better start building our arcs 
Yeah, you know, really and getting out of too. Babylon. So, you know? Hey, I'll let you go so you get okay. to the next call. All right, we haven't had too much everything. time. Thanks for calling. Hello, you're on the air. Hello? Oh, yes, I was just calling up. Is, uh, uh, is it okay to speak with the, the host of the show? Yes. Hi. Okay. Hello? Oh, do I, uh, yes, I'm here. Okay, what's up? What's your question? Oh, yeah, I, you know, I agree with the global warming thing. It's a really bad problem. Yeah. I mean, like, I think it's, oh, it's much worse well, than... This, well, but there's a new, new one, a new threat, electrostatic discharge. They've monitored with a probe at the airport on the exhaust of the uh, airplanes, and it, it, there's a new... It's, a, it's an electrostatic discharge which aids in the CO2 emission and causes the atmosphere further damage. Destroys the ozone layer. Oh, I mean, you mean you're talking like these jet planes? Well, it's all, it's like the analogy would be kind of like the capacitive reactant and stuff. You have like the, uh, it's like, um, it's inversely proportional to the, to the, to the area of the dielectric plane. I don't understand what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, in the science of, of um, measurement and calibration, and the government is evil. Oh, the government's very evil. Yeah. It doesn't matter whether you're Democrat or Republican <clears throat> or any of them. They need to abolish this all world government. Well, actually, I think a world government would be pretty good, but you know, it'd have to be run by somebody that was benevolent and not evil. You know, like this one. I'm I'm for one world government, but I'm not for like globalist plutocrat capitalism. You know, it's like a lot of people are saying. You know, we got to stop capitalism because it's based on growth, you know, they have to keep growing and expanding and, you know, we don't really need to do that, you know, we should be able to make the world a better place, you know, like plant trees and, and gardens and, you know, like these whole, the way, whole way that the houses are built today, it's not like conducive to neighborhoods and uh, it's not, you know, it doesn't form a community, that's part of the problem in the world today, you know, I feel like my Facebook friends are more of a community than anybody around my house. I live in, you know, around the university, so mostly students live around there. There's no families, you know. It's like, um, but, you know, the whole world has been like, there's so many unnecessary jobs that, um, that you know, like cashiers and bankers, bookkeepers, accountants, salesmen, and all those people, they aren't producing anything. And if we, um, you know, there's, We've got to change, or it's just not going to last. It's going to, like, um, people aren't working, and and there's you know really no reason that they have to work. You know, they make some bogus job for them, doing something unnecessary, selling junk. You know, we should make our own clothes. You know, that that's what they should be teaching in schools is, you know, make your own clothes and and grow gardens and you know make things nice for for the future and uh not destroy um the planet you know we need to respect this planet because i you know they had this new story come out and i wasn't going to talk about this but you know they they think oh there's billions of other planets out there this this is on the front page of the new york times but um you know there's just so many contingencies in, in order for there to be life on on the planet, you know, that, like, it, it just seems so unlikely. It took, like, two billion years for for one-cell organisms to start existing, and then it was all dependent on oxygen, too, and the oxygen has to be just the right level, or, uh, and, like, in the early times of the planet, the volcanoes would suck up all the oxygen, and it, it was all created by these plants in the, in the water, they um, photosynthesis and gave off oxygen, and uh, so you know. I mean, they, we, what we kind of a religion we really need is one where, you know, like the Native Americans, they respected the earth, and uh, you know that's not what we're doing. Like, look at these people in China. You know, they've got this horrible air pollution, and and um, they can't even breathe. And they, you know, the, the whole reason they're doing that is because they need to produce things and sell them over here. You know, and and then we're gonna ship oil over there, and 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 things like that. And you know, it's just we should be 
you know, that's one thing I like about nationalism is, you know, it's you take care of, you know, your area, you know, and and make sure that that's partly what they're doing with invading Iraq. You know, I think they did that, you know, to steal the oil and and then they they went in and got rid of Gaddafi to steal his oil. And Gaddafi was also very active in in Africa, <clears throat> but he was, you know, about he wanted to start like a United States of Africa, and uh, so um, you know the CIA has been active in coup d'etats all over the world, and so I just say why not Dallas too? But um, you know they 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 won't release all this information until like Bush Senior dies and. They probably might not, you know, that they won't, there's still a lot of stuff they were supposed to release. It's part of the law says they're supposed to release this. Oh, I got another call. Hello? Hello? I got another call. Hello? Hi. Hello? Please answer. Well, I, I, they were acting kind of rowdy. I don't, they didn't realize they were on the air. But, yeah, I've got this quotation from... Uh, this guy, Gaddafi, he wrote this thing called the Green Book. And uh, it's very similar. He talks about, you know, we have to have an abundance. And I also got an edit. I edited the section in Wikipedia about uh, communism because very few people realize that a true communist believes in eliminating money. And uh, they even... Uh, I got uh, Friedrich Engels... It's all when, like, when production reaches a certain stage, that money will become superfluous. Like, if you have an abundance, there's no reason to have to divvy it out or to to barter for it, you know. And um, there's, you know, it's life could be so much better if we built like really nice buildings that would last a long time, you know, instead of this sheetrock and two by four stuff. They're building these really cheap dormitories down on Ninth Street with this really nasty press they call it pressed horse manure, those chipboards. And you can smell it like across the street, you know, and these kids are gonna be living in these buildings and that smell's gonna come through, you know. It's like and uh, you know, it's like a fire trap and I didn't want them to build it down there. And and we got this dumb trolley here in, in Tucson that's probably never going to make any money. It's probably going to be a big loss of money. But, um, yeah, things were just designed differently. I, it, I just, you know, the only hope I really have is, like, if we can convince, like I was saying earlier, somebody like Jimmy Carter and his son, and, you know, we'll get a bunch of scientists together and say, look, you know, you know, they killed Kennedy. This 9-11 thing is a big fraud, and, you know, we're... Uh, we're heading down the wrong path, you know, and and if we don't change, you know, spiritually, you know, I mean, how, how can we go on like this? It's very unhealthy, and it's not, you know, there's not, it's all just like games, you know, this Wall Street monopoly money they're playing on with their computers, and they have these programs that trade with milliseconds, and they're not really, and then, then we got this insider trading, they just busted these guys and they agreed to pay a, I think almost a trillion dollar fine or something for like insider trading and you know those are the ones that are making all the money this guy has like a 60 million dollar house on Long Island and um, so those are the people that have all the money and and like <clears throat> I just um, think that you know when things don't change then we better plan for um, like, like Mad Max or something, you know. It's or like this revolution. I like this show, Revolution. I, there's, you know, I was explaining to you earlier that, you know, there's a little fantasy in there, but this basically could be the future. You know, there's there's a lot of stories out there now. You know, the you know Na- National Geographic has a thing. You know, this wasn't too popular long ago. You know, like in the 70s, we had the population bomb and and the Club of Rome and their limits to growth. I mean, we knew back in the 70s that, that, that you know, there's limits to growth, but um, Jimmy Carter tried to do something about the oil, and 
But uh, anyway, my name is Raquel. <clears throat> in order to buy or sell, you have to have the money of the beast on your mind or in your hand. It's one of those things they don't tell you. And anyway, bye. Hmm. <laughs>